if I get started and talk about the web 2.0 to 3.0, um, currently um, there is the trend that we talk about where we say, uh, if you look at here, we talk about focus, technology, ownership. Um, here it talks about 3D graphics, no and yes, but I think um, it's uh, in terms of the kind of applications that we are seeing in Web3 for the graphics, whether it is metaverse, whether it, whether it is all kinds of application, which is very graphic intensive and uh, content rich applications, right? And then you have uh, your target reach, you have types of applications. So take a look at the Web2 applications where we have your Facebook, Instagram, you know, all kinds of current uh, client server type based applications. And then you move to Web3 Web where we are saying that uh, the ownership of the data is owned by the person. It, it's, it doesn't mean that uh, today, if you log into Facebook, Facebook has your data. But today, if you launch a decentralized application, like what we have been hearing in terms of the concepts, um, the data storage is not, the, the data sharing is not happening to the company who's running it. For example, here, um, the data is owned by the person. So if the way I interact with the network, the way I post transactions, it's specific to me. My data stays with me. It doesn't mean that my data is shared to the the service that I'm using, right? So if it's um, a, a curve that you look at and the trend that's following, right? Uh, here uh, in Web 1.0, we had very, very static websites, basic HTML, browsers like Netscape and, you know, old Mozilla uh, and other uh, read-only websites that's early 90s, mid 90s. And then we had a Web 2 where we talk about uh, dynamic information, we talk about learning, we talk about machine learning, taking up, picking up. Then we also have um, a lot of data which is being shared and learned upon. So uh, as an example for Web2, where we say that, uh, I, I keep giving the example where uh, you get a recommended engine, right? So you go on Amazon and then you search for something, you get recommended products, right? So. Uh, people learn from your history, your transaction history. Uh, that means that the data is being shared, uh, even in terms of uh, a recommendation engine where you keep using Instagram and TikTok and all where the type of videos that you watch, the same type of videos you keep getting. For example, if you keep watching healthy cooking videos or you know health tips and all, you still keep getting those videos. So your data, your web presence is being shared and learned upon and basically you don't get even incentivized for it right for data sharing now we're trying to do this shift from the 2.0 to 3.0 where we're saying everything is decentralized my data stays with me and i'm only posting a transaction through a, a wallet id or a unique id or an encrypted id where uh, we're still executing the transactions we're still executing the processes but uh, the it is all decentralized. There's no one centralized body like Pravin uh, Sir was mentioning about different types of blockchains. Uh, and currently, we're not talking about how the network is managing its nodes or adding transactions to the blocks and how the blocks are being added to uh, the network. So just to simplify very simple steps, a uh, set of transactions coupled into a block chain of blocks is blockchain, right? So uh, so the idea is every blockchain has its own way of um, adding transactions to the block, validating these transactions, adding the blocks to the network, and then building the chain. And then how much and uh, how much, how many incentives are being given, how much is the reward given to the validators, the node, all of this is specific to the blockchain, right? So so the the history talks about moving from uh, read-only to a dynamic application where the data was shared, where it was a client server architecture, where your even the Google search history is being stored on data servers on Google. And now we are moving to uh, Web3 where we are saying the ownership of my activity stays with me, right? And, and the data is secure and the data is immutable. I cannot delete the data. Uh, I'll give you one example of uh, an application on the blockchain where we say um, there is a transaction which is happening where somebody is approving a transaction, that approval 
stays on the on the network. That that approval as a transaction gets added to the block, and then the block is added to uh, the network, right? The chain. So this network, this approval, this chain, or this hierarchy, or this list which is being created. It's immutable. Tomorrow, if, if somebody else takes another approval, another transaction is created. So you cannot go back to an old transaction and delete it. So I, it's basically, I, I'll, I'll also show you when I um, uh, display the network and how these transactions are recorded, how uh, a, a smart contract is executing so many functions and um, how this uh, list is being created. So that way we, uh, we say that there is my unique ID, there is the unique transaction code, which is encrypted. There is unique block ID, which is encrypted and, and the network flows. So um, there is uh, uh, the history of web where we move from web 1.0 to 2.0 to 3.0. And then very important, as I said, there's companies who are implementing blockchain at every level. It doesn't have to be only financial transactions or crypto transactions or token transactions. Um, everything comes down to technology. Again, we are making sure that this is purely not an investment advice. We are talking about technology. We are all technical people and um, we need to understand how this thing works. Okay. Uh